Hey guys, Brian from MBK Reptiles here, and basically right now we're basically on attempt number two of showcasing you a bunch of awesome baby clovers that we've basically hatched out. Now we're basically on step two of the hatching process. So we've already hatched a bunch of snakes. Now the goal is to identify our snakes. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through two clutches, uh, one milk snake clutch and a corn snake clutch. Basically the same that we've done a few videos back, but I brought some tools, some better tools before the chaos. So we got a bucket today. We're not going to take a chance and we're going to put the snakes inside the bucket. We'll be able to go through them. I'll go through the process of identifying each uh, and every different uh, morphs that we hatch out. We're going to start a little bit easy, but with some really amazing snakes. So let's dive right in. So we're up for a 30 minutes video. So about 30 minutes. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I, I usually try to handle our videos like around 8 to 12 minutes, um, which is pretty, pretty darn good for me. So here, guys, we have a, a very nice assortment of corn snakes from anneries to normals and mixed with scalus and tesseras. So the pairing here was basically a tessera scalus het annery with a tessera het snow scalus as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull them all out and put them inside the bucket so we know that they will not just escape. And I'm not gonna spend about two minutes of the video running around snakes. And we're gonna go right here, just gonna dive into the moss. And we are in business. So what we know now is that all the animals are either scaleless or head scaleless. Um, this year, since the scaleless price has started to go down, uh, we're only keeping like female head scaleless uh, to basically sell to the public or for retail purposes because of value-wise. Everything that is just uh, uh, regular or males that are on the very lower end, those are going through wholesale distributors to pet stores and a lot of different sources. So what we have right now is... Um, when I'm looking at them, like we have like we have some anneries, we have some scales, we have some tesseras. So the tessera is definitely noticeable from the stripe on the back. And then all the ones with with scales have this zigzag patterns on the side, which is really, really cool. I really like them. We do work with a lot of tesseras. The main reason why is not just because of the pattern, but it's actually because of the quality of my lineage that are they're like a they seem to be a little bit bigger, a little like much healthier animal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove snake after snake and we're going to put them up. So right here we have a regular corn snake. So this is your base regular corn snake. You can tell them from a little burgundy color to them. They have like these little orange spots as they grow some red, some oranges starts to come out. So this is basically a snake number one. So this one, I won't even sex it right now just because it's just a regular corn. So they go through wholesale right away. We do export a lot of animals. Now we have the anneries. So these ones, they just lack all the colors to it. So it's just a black and gray snake. Um, one of the, one of the favorites and definitely in the scale list, people love them because when you pull out those scales, the snake is purple. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna sex the snake, so we're gonna go right in. And I just basically pop the animal, and we can see the two hemipenes just stick right out. So this is a male. So the fact that it's a male, this snake is going to go for um, wholesale. So what I do is I will just put the tub in, and then I just leave it a little bit open uh, just to let me know that it's a male. And then the females, I'll just push the cup right in. So we're gonna go through the other two anneries really fast. Just pop right through another male. Well, imagine like right now what we're doing is we're going through two clutches today. So the milk snakes is going to be different. I don't sex. So here we go. So we have a female. So this is going to be a anery head scalus female that we are actually going to be growing up for probably six to 12 months uh, before we actually put it up for sale because we like our animals to be much bigger. Now, here are two tesseras. So you can really notice that zigzag pattern on them. 
really nice. So these are, again, those are dominant mutation. So we're just gonna go through and keep only the females. So we do have a female. This is our female here. And then the other one here is another female. So female is good for us because actually they mean that they are worth a little bit more money. Now, when it comes to the Aniri Tessera, so this very nice. I really like how they age. They're more on the gray side as they, as they get bigger. Now, this one's male, females, we keep them all. So the fact that we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of snakes, uh, I don't necessarily sex all the snakes. I just want to be able to, to separate the wholesale animals to the retail animals. That's my first step that I want to do. So I identify them and then I basically split that up. We have a beautiful scaleless. So this is a, just a normal scales corn. So you can see from the one that had the scales, much more orange, very nice. So these ones, we do grow them up. We have two testeras. Now these, you can see like the scales, they vary so much. So they're both normal testeras, but you can see that one is much more orange than the other one. If I look at the belly, we can see the belly are pretty much the same. Now one, you think that there, it's a red belly, but it's just actually that it doesn't have any scales on the belly. So you can see that middle of the line that doesn't have scales. Put these two here. And then the number one baby of our clutch is actually one of the favorite ones when it comes to people right now. So many people love them. So this is a Annery Tessera corn snake. Scaleless. Scaleless, exactly, yeah. So these ones, they're just simply stunning. Just the purple, the blue head um, with that pattern. I mean, as they grow up, like in about like a few months, the contrast of them is just magnificent. So this is was was basically what we were aiming for, and our odds on there were not. Uh, so we had basically since we had two tesseras together, so about seventy five percent of the babies are tesseras, and then the anaries was about half of them. So all in all a good good ratio of, to be able to produce these ones so this is just the process that we go through we do have about 500 clutches like maybe i'm exaggerating a little bit probably like between 350 to 400 clutches of uh, colubrids that we're going to have to go through that process as they hatch now now those are milk snakes so we have two clutches of milk snakes that we basically put into one i'm going to put those right away in our bucket because these guys are crazy at least the clutches uh, are usually a little bit smaller. So in here we have two different uh, clutches. We have one of Nelson, Nelson milk snakes and the other one of Pueblo milk snakes. The Nelsons were a pair of T positive albino to a splotched head albino. And the other one was what we call the Halloween Pueblo milk snakes. So the Halloween's they go through a different selectively bred process. So here they are. I'm gonna go through this moss, make sure nothing is left, and we are good to go. So definitely so much color. Now, you know what they say. So what's the saying for the for the milk snakes, Antoine? You know? It's um, red touches yellow. Kills a fellow, red touches black, friend of Jack. Here we go. So that's exactly how, what it is and how we say it. Um, really amazing. So we can see there's only two of the Pueblin Halloween. So we're gonna remove those up right away. There's so much different coloration on here, which is really cool. So these are what we call bicolor Halloween Pueblin milks. Now, why do I say bicolors? Because there's still a lot of orange on them. Our main goal is to have uh, a only orange and black snake, but when they're red like this on the side, it makes it really, really cool. So these are bicolor Halloween Pueblin milk snakes. Really awesome snakes. I'm just gonna put them away and off we go. 
So milk snakes are not necessarily the beginner snake. Now they're very easy to care for, but they're super skittish. So they move around really fast. So we definitely don't suggest them to anybody that is buying their first snake. Now here we have our Nelson Milk Clutch. So the pairing was a T positive Nelson, which for whoever's there, if you're able to see, we do have some T positives, which are basically the two little purple ones right here. And then the T positive is head albino, and the other pair was the other male. The male was actually a splotched head albino, which is also head Nelson because we had T positive because we actually had both of them. So the T positive. Are, is the albino, so sorry, the, the albino is what we call a T negative, and the purple one would be the T positive, which is really cool. So this is the difference between the T positive and the T negative. So very, very nice. My main goal here is that I don't have any of the splotch T positive. So this is what I wanna do. I wanna be able to increase this T positive splotched collection. So I'm making a bunch of heads that I will be sexing them up as they grow a little bit bigger to see what do I have to keep them. So here we had one albino and then we have a T positive. We do have another T positive right here. I really, I really like the eyes. I don't know if you're able to capture the eyes, but they have like a very, very cool eye to them there's just something like there's this color like they're not a normal like red albino but they have like this little uh, ruby eye what do you think that's yeah pretty good yeah, yeah. ruby eye. that's pretty yeah. much it the little ruby eyes and then to finish up our normal nelsons so if red touches yellow you're a dead fellow if red touches black you're okay jack that's 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 about it. That's about it. That that is only Woo! that is only valid uh, in North America for a little trivia. If you go in Central America and South America, uh, that rule uh, doesn't apply. And why is that? Uh, because the the coral snakes in Central America are just very various in colors, and you have some that have like different colors. You have some that looks like that, and you know. Anyways, so. We were able to skip the chaos until right now. Um, so we're just putting away these little Nelsons. They do have this little attitude and they're biting, they love to bite. And the funny thing is that like, let's say like a baby corn snake would bite you. Uh, you honestly don't feel much, but the milk snakes, they have like good teeth on them. You see, like yeah, you're, you're teeth, you? little bud. God damn man. So we're gonna put some ink on there and then tattoo it up. Anyway guys, thank you very much for spending the time with us watching this video. Uh, I love to share it with you guys. Um, we have a lot more work to do today. Uh, I've already, before I did those two clutches, I had already done about like probably 10 or 20 clutches and I probably have another 10, 20 to go. So wish me luck, we're gonna be doing this all day. But until then, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what other type of species of snakes you want us to do those types of video because those hatching videos we have everything's hatching right now so right now is the time so until then thank you very much make sure to subscribe and no stress we'll see you at a show nearby